I'm standing in the heart of what used to be called Black Bottom, on the site of the old Brewster projects. Black Bottom was named by the French for the rich, fertile soil that populates the area. Starting in about night, roughly 1910, you started having an enormous migration of, of people from the south to the north, including a sizable number of African-American folks. From the 1920s up through the early 1960s, this area was primarily populated by black families and several hundred black businesses. We kind of had two different waves of migration to this, this town. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. The first one was 19, starting around 1910. Uh, and by the way, people would come up here. I mean, I've read accounts of people taking the train. They'd get off on, 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 on the train station over Michigan Avenue and literally have nowhere to go. They just got here, no place to meet, and, and so the Urban League at that time would, would help people out as they got here. And then you had another wave starting in about 1940, where as the war effort is getting ramped up, a whole ton of jobs opened up. This documentary delves into part of the history from that time and tells some of the stories of the people who lived here. Well, my name is Dor it was Doris Brooks Watkins. Uh, it was Doris Brooks in, during my school years. And uh, I was born here in the city of Detroit. Um, actually, my family lived on Maple Street, but I was born at Herman Kiefer Hospital. And uh, we, I was raised up right there, um, as we call Black Bottom, on Maple. My name is Marie Burns Dean. Uh, I grew up on Brewster Street, which was one block north of Gratiot. Most of us that was born here was born on the east side. Stayed right over here in the Brewster Project. My family was one of the Four families that moved in the Brewster projects. Uh, Metro Detroit, or Detroit was damn near full employment during the war, and you had a lot of people moving up from the south, white and African American. But once again, a lot of places African Americans could not move, and so more likely, more often than not, they would end up in, in, in Black Bottom. It was at that particular time. It was nice coming up over there. They had a lot of things going on. We'd go to the Brewster Center. I remember going there. I remember seeing uh, uh, all the fights. Uh, uh, I remember seeing Joe Lewis, uh, uh, Sugar Ray Robinson. You know. Now I was living where I lived. I went to Norval Elementary School, which was like many schools. It was pretty well um, integrated. Uh, we didn't have those racial tensions. Uh, I think the only time there was any racial <laughs> tension that there was some was when Joe Lewis won the championship and he won it from Matt Schmeller. Now, when I got to Duffield, immediately I met some wonderful people, friends, mm -hmm. children who lived in Black Bottom. And that was my introduction to Black Bottom. And we became very, very fast friends. Uh, we had a lot of wonderful experiences. Everything was about love mm -hmm. at that time. Black Bottom was about love. Yes. And yes. it still extends. If you yes. say from Black Bottom, if you see somebody in Black Bottom, that's it. Mm -hmm. You see, this is a bond that we had mm -hmm. together. Yeah. I can remember walking from the, from the projects to school, and I must have been about eight, nine, and my sister, she's three years younger than me, and I would take her to school, you know, and we would walk with the rest of the kids. I mean, it was a fun time. We walked, we walked. to school yes. every day, and we never had snow days. We never had snow days. Never remember, no. We never had cold weather days. No, we walked. We walked. The kids today, uh, parents have to take them to school. You know, we walked to school, even high school. I never caught a bus to high school, and I lived on Hastings, and the high school was Miller High, which was on Shane and Jay. Building the bonds mm -hmm. of friendship, 
I think it's what helped us extend our culture, our ambitions mm -hmm. far beyond mm -hmm. uh, elementary school, uh, high school, junior high school, mm -hmm. and high school. And just say that you and I have been knowing each other for over 70 something years. That's right. Over 70, over 70, over years. 70 years. That's right. What were your experiences like growing up? Um, you know, at the time, I thought it was hard. But as I look back and reflect now over the years, it was a caring atmosphere. Nobody had anything. Wherever I was outside of the neighborhood, I felt insecure. But the moment I got to Hastings, you know, I felt safe. And it was. And uh, there were some great people. We were mentored by the whole neighborhood. I remember particularly there was one family and uh, uh, the, uh, the adult males and things are deceased now, but the three daughters are still the Drain family. It was very close to uh, me. I think I spent most of my childhood every day in their home for one reason or other playing with the kids. Your days at Miller High School, what were they like? Oh, they were great. They were great. Uh, I can remember at first when I graduated from Bishop, you know, we had a school system then was uh, kindergarten to eighth grade, you were in elementary school. And from eighth grade to twelfth, uh, it was high school. And uh, I had uh, some concerns in the beginning because that was a new environment for me going over, over there. But once I got there, it was just like one big happy family. And I, ooh, I have gone shopping, and uh, folks have walked up and said, didn't you go to Miller? And we start a conversation, you know. Every year, the second Sunday in August, we have this uh, gathering uh, there at the old school uh, playground. And we've been doing that for, oh, well over uh, 30 years now. One of the things that they did at uh, Miller is they try to provide different types of opportunities and activities for the students. Al Loving yes. was a, well, he was just a light in the shadows of whatever darkness might have been there. It was the, pres the, the uh, presentation of opportunities and uh, situations that we received at Miller that prepared us to be able to have the confidence in ourselves. In high school, we had teachers that really cared. I mean, it was none of this stuff where you don't touch my kid. You know, if I acted out in school and went home and told my grandparents, because I was reared by my grandparents, that uh, I had gotten it, you know, the teacher did this or that. I got a, a spanking, got a whole, well, we'd have called it a spanking, I got a whooping when I, when I got a whole. Yeah, is Mr. Loving one of your favorite teachers, or who was? Yes. Mr. Loving. Yes. He was the leader. Yes. For the teacher. He taught us a lot. And then along came Miss White. Oh, yeah. Remember Miss White? Manetta White. White. Manetta White. White. Yes. She was the, she was one of our class sponsors. Sponsors, yes. sure was, yes. Mm-hmm. We had Mr. Colfer. Mr. Colfer. We're speaking of the blacks now because we didn't have too many at right. Miller. Right. Oh, okay. Benjamin was the first one. He taught physical education for the men, the right. boys. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And then came Mr. Loving. Mm -hmm. And then came Annette White. And Mr. Colfer. And Mr. No, Mr. Colfer and Loving came almost, oh, almost right. simultaneously. That's right. Uh -huh. That was, that was the size of the blacks there. Mm -hmm. That was it. That was and it. then dudes came. Mr. Dews, that's right. Mm -hmm. uh, Robinson. Okay. It? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Mr. Yeah, Robinson. Right. These were the men who were in the mm -hmm. athletic department. Mm -hmm. Mr. Uh, Loving, though, taught English and mm -hmm. public speaking. And, of course, Mr. Leach. Nathaniel yeah, Leach. Nathaniel Leach. He was our, our first taught language. Language, that's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you remember who your favorite teacher was? Oh, yes. I love her to this day. Thank God she's still with us. <coughs> Excuse me, Miss Brown. Lillian Brown. Uh, She's 93 now. Tell me a little bit about her. She was my math teacher. 
And it's strange because Charlie Primus and I tell the same lie, I guess. Uh, she flunked me though, she flunked me twice. But she would stay after school to try to hammer that math into my brain and I was just had this thing about math. Uh, but she would, she would take that kind of time and she not only dealt with the academics, she dealt with your socializing and stuff, you know. And if the boys come in with a little older on them or something, she told them about baking soda, you know. To put on the, the arm to, to cut the musk down. And uh, so uh, although uh, in terms of uh, my class performance at that time was on the negative side, uh, on the social side, we became very close. And then uh, we had uh, some great men teaching at, at that time. And there was Lorenzo Wright, who was the football coach. And Lorenzo was also a gold medal winner in the Olympics. And then there was Leroy Dews, who was the first black athletic director. Uh, in the city of Detroit, uh, who's a track coach. And he took a lot of time in counseling and, and stuff with it. And then there, of course, there was the legendary Will Robinson. Those are the kinds of people uh, uh, that would, I had a, a uh, lit teacher who I loved. Uh, uh, she saw something, I, I used to like to try to write. Uh, her name was Miss Saunders. And then, of course, I had the legendary Nathaniel Leach, uh, who was the historian for Second Baptist. Miller High School has a school reunion. We call it a school, but it's a picnic that we have every second Sunday in August. Mm -hmm. And members of Bill Miller High School, even their friends, we all gather and have a big picnic. So they draw hundreds and hundreds of people. Mm -hmm. On the second Sunday of August, we've been doing that for, oh, how many years? Oh, been doing gee, many years. Right after our 40th, it was a before. Right, that's right. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, we gather there, but that's, that's, and uh, it's called the school picnic. Uh, we, uh, Marie and I, will we be planning on our 70th class reunion coming up uh, in the fall uh, of, okay. out of Miller High School. We graduated in 1945, mm -hmm. so we'll be celebrating 70 years mm -hmm. out of high school. That's our class reunion, but the picnic is the school reunion, more or less, everybody mm -hmm. from the school comes. But uh, that's something we're looking forward to, 70 years. And many things happened in 1945, I believe. Didn't the war end in 1945? Yes, yes, yeah, yes, many yes, things yes, happened in 1945. Right, that's right, happened in 1945. So it's kind of a historical year, and for us too, you know. Mm -hmm. So we're excited about that. Mm -hmm. so there were so many things around that um, just helped us to have a natural, mm -hmm. normal mm -hmm. uh, lifestyle. Lifestyle, that was mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. yeah. Hi, I'm sitting in Colors Restaurant at the foot of Grand River in downtown Detroit in the area known as Harmony Park. This area was formerly known as Paradise Valley. Paradise Valley was the business district for the African American community known as Black Valley. The business district included hotels, restaurants, grocery stores, nightclubs, lawyers, doctors, insurance companies, and much more. In its heyday, businesses in Paradise Valley served the African American community. Blacks were usually prevented from patronizing businesses in other parts of the city. The important thing about Hastings Street was the main business drag through the African American neighborhood. So you had a whole ton of, of thriving businesses, you know, restaurants, uh, funeral homes, uh, bars, uh, churches, you name it, record stops, record shops, and it, it, so it became kind of the cultural and business hub of the African-American community. Everyone from celebrities to everyday folk speak fondly of their experiences in Paradise Valley. Hayson Street, my uncle, had a pool room on um, Hayson Street. Yes, yeah, so he had like a, a little whatnot store where he sold uh, incense, little ashtrays, Anything you want, just like a five and dime, you know. Uh, uh, I'm in the castle theater. I mean, it's it's 
All the black businesses was up there. We had a, a drugstore, Bothwell's. Had some of the best ice cream in the world, you know. Uh, we had doctors up there. Matter of fact, the doctor who delivered me was up there, uh, Dr. Green. Going to a doctor, one doctor was everything. He and delivered he, the babies, he did everything. One doctor. And his all. office was some, most of the time in his home. His home. Either in the front or yeah. in the basement. <laughs> That, that was, that that was that where was the doctor. doctor's office was. Right, yeah. Dr. Stewart, I can remember him I remember so well. Dr. Stewart, right yes. there on Du Bois, mm -hmm. right. south of Gresham. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But Paradise Valley. Yes. That was the place. That was a, the horseshoe. What was the horseshoe? Mm -hmm. that, that was 606. 12 horsemen. Mm -hmm. uh, what was it? The 12 horsemen found it? No. The, 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 the okay. horseshoe. Flame. The flame. The flame. Mm -hmm. Flame shoe box, right. Mm -hmm. Because see, El Casino. Mm -hmm. El Casino, whatever that was, mm -hmm. right, yeah. Yeah, all of that, yeah. Do, do either of you remember uh, Sonny Wilson? Oh, of course. Oh, yeah. Of oh, course. Oh, yes. That was, oh, my that's God. That's where he went to skate. Oh, yeah. We Sonny Wilson. And bowling. We used to bowl up bowl there. there. Bowling, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. The Forest Club. Oh, yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. That was fun, too. Sonny just had a head head for business. He opened up a place called the Forest Social Club, which he used to advertise as the biggest race-owned roller rink in the world. But think about that, the biggest race owned. So this is a guy who's got, first of all, just by that thing, a racial consciousness right up in front. But what's he after? He wants to be big. So this guy was just built for business. Uh, that's just the way he thought. And the other thing that he thought, he was, he was an important member of the community. I mean, if somebody was running into trouble, Sonny could get them a meal and, and he was, he was considered the unofficial mayor, of, you know, of, of Black Bottom. Uh, the old three-star bar was right across the street from us, and that was was famous at that time for many, many reasons. <laughs> Not all positive. For that, yeah. you know, we had mom and pop stores too. Sure did. We had mom and pop. We had this one. Uh, I think it was right there off of Elmwood. No, we were on Marlow, uh, Monroe. So it was like either Elmwood. El Elmwood, I think it was. Mm -hmm. Mom and Pop. It was two old couples. Mm -hmm. And what happened, those years you could run a tab. You could go and, you know, you buy your food mm -hmm. and they tie it down and then when you whatever you got money, you go and you pay it. Mm -hmm. But that's how you had to shop. When you didn't have money, you run a tab and they put down what you bought mm -hmm. and then later on you'd go and pay for it. Mm -hmm. You know, and it was called Mom and Pop stores. Remember we had the black cleaners. Remember Coleman Young? Yes. We had Young's cleaners, mm -hmm. Young's cleaners. Mm -hmm. And we had Singleton's cleaners, mm -hmm. Singleton's. And there was mm -hmm. one up on Shane, uh -huh. just north of Grasher. I can't think of the name of okay. it. Okay. But and, Young's had the cleaners. And Singleton, and it was another one. Mm -hmm. We had cleaners. Sure did. So we had a lot of black business down in, in Black Bottom. Mm -hmm. Quite a few. Yeah, yeah. cleaners, barber shops, mm -hmm. uh, all those. Yeah, all those beauty shops. And a lot of little, little restaurants. You yes. know where yes. you could go in and get a little mm -hmm. bit of something. Mm -hmm. Good old soul mm -hmm. food. Soul food. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. There was a lot going on up in Hastings. You know, the girls, the street girls would be out there. They had the dance halls up there, you know. They had all the bars up there, you know. But I, I can say this, that even with all that going on, there was never any uh, incidents, you know, really bad incidents, you know. My father, and he spoke of this about all, most of the black men who came up here they wanted to have some kind of business because uh, my father said, I'm going to be my own boss. Yes. And I speak of this because it's not too far from Black Bottom. And by the way, there were a lot of guys like that uh, who, who did real well in business and were, by the way, role models for African-American kids. And there was a guy named Sidney Barthwell who was one of the early African-American pharmacists who I think owned two pharmacists, pharmacies here. Uh, in town. So you had a whole class of African American business folks who had businesses on Hastings Street, which were, you know, I, I think that showed the way for a lot of African American kids was saying, yeah, I, I can do that. You know? I can remember uh, going to the castle uh, with my dad. He'd take us up there and we sit in the show <coughs> and watch uh, Cowboy at first. First movie I seen with a black actors in it, 
Well, that, 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 that black cobble. I know I never came with my rope and my saddle and my horse and my gun. I'm a happy cowboy. But what about the mm -hmm. two theater, Josephine, that... That were on Shane Street. Oh, on Street. Black Bottom. Yes, Black Bottom. Black Bottom. We had in Black Two Bottom, theaters. not downtown. Black Bottom. Okay. We had the Savoy and the Catherine. Catherine and the Savoy. Savoy. Okay. Those, okay. That was on Shane. Those were the theaters we went to. What kinds of movies did they show? The Catherine and the Savoy. Yeah. I don't know, Cassidy. Yeah, right. Cowboy <laughs> movies. Cowboys. Yes, cowboys. I like. Yeah, right. Cowboys. <laughs> See, there was no television during that time, so mm -hmm. we had to watch the listen to the radio or you know go mm -hmm. to the movie. That was it, mm -hmm. yeah. But that, but they were good times. They were they good were. times, mm -hmm. good times, yeah. Bruce the Center used to have this uh, talent show, and uh, this guy, his name was his, was Malcolm Carter. I don't know if Malcolm is still with us. Uh, I knew his dad well. We attended the same church as dad passed, but uh, we thought Malcolm could sing, you know. So when they had the talent show, all of us out there, all the neighborhood kids pull it for, for Malcolm, uh, who we called Bubble. Everybody had a nickname back then. So uh, uh, he lost to a girl that we said cheated, you know. This, a, this girl could not see him. Everybody was all upset about it, all the kids. And that girl, I was told later on, that was Aretha Franklin. There were a lot of heroes that came through uh, uh, at that time. Uh, uh, Sugar Ray Robinson had a chicken uh, restaurant there on on, uh, on front of highway, you know. And you can see these guys, and maybe Joe Lewis, as a matter of fact, his, his sister was one of my teachers at Miller. There was a singer, Lou Willie John, was a classmate. His sister graduated with his Dolores John. Uh, you had uh, Roger, uh, well, his name was Roger Creighton, but he went on to become Lee Rogers, who son of, oh, he was uh, one of the things in Motown. Uh, Martha Reeves was you know, a lot younger, but she lived in the next block behind us there, Wilkins. And then there were people who came back and, and gave her their, uh, uh, of, their uh, of their time. Mm -hmm. You know, we had all, the, fight, the fight game was what, like kids are looking for basketball, we were looking for, right. because that's where the money was at yeah. that time. Mm -hmm. uh, there were very few black uh, basketball players outside of the Globetrotters. Those were some of the heroes, or Bobby Hall and, the, and those guys. Well, there was a a black police officer that made a difference. His name was Avery Jackson. Okay. And it was out of the 13th Precinct. Mm -hmm. And Avery went on to uh, uh, form a, a league, an athletic league, for the young kids in the area. It's the 13th Precinct Baseball League. And, and we all had t-shirts and stuff. But he spent a lot of time with us. Uh, uh, One of the things that I want to ask you about first, Ben Turpin. Well, I think he's an interesting character. Mr. Ben, we used to call him. Yeah. Yeah. He was a black police officer that patrolled mainly uh, around the uh, Shane Street, uh, east of, I mean, not east, but uh, south of uh, Verna Highway there. But uh, they used to carry two pearl handle forty fives, uh, and I remember him. He was always a loner, and uh, used to have to call him Mr. Ben. I, I was quite young at that time, so I didn't have any real conflict or anything. I just knew of him from the neighborhood. He would tell you to clear the area, and you clear the area, you know. Uh, he carried a, a high level of respect, and I think a lot of it too was out of intimidation. You know, we did not want to have, or even adults at that time didn't want to have the conflict uh, with Ben Durbin. But there was a bunch of 
my peers who ended up being police command officers. Uh, Charles Henry became deputy chief. Uh, Alan Hughes, we called it Jocko. We ended up we had a deputy chief. We had uh, Ernest Travis, who was the first black uh, uh, tactical, tactical mobile unit uh, officer. Uh, uh, and there was uh, uh, Ridley Robinson, who became commander over at the uh, uh, Seventh Precinct. Uh, uh, migraine, uh, Melvin Williams, we called him migraine because he used to have these headaches. He played, all of us played football together. It was a good time, you know. And then they had this urban renewal. I can remember them coming down and digging up the streets. And I can remember all the black businesses just folding up. In the 1950s, the city instituted a program of urban renewal, which essentially uprooted many families and destroyed nearly all of the businesses located here. It was devastating in a way because if downtown was not really black friendly. The people who had those homes and businesses over there, they got robbed. Mm -hmm. My grandmother had a four family flat that we lived in. Uh, we lived upstairs and her income was off of the, the two flats uh, underneath us. And uh, she only got $13,000 for that four, four family flat. But what it enabled her to do, thank God, was that uh, she moved to the east side there with Seaburn and Mac and I was able to pay for a new home, but she lost her income. I consider myself fortunate to have been able to, to, to live through that area because unfortunately uh, the, 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 the kids and, and people that's coming up now, they'll never realize the times that I was, you know, those type of times. I mean, we were, uh, we were a, a real true community. You didn't know, worry about nobody hitting you in the head or robbing you or anything. And there was a tremendous respect for women and for children. You know, it wasn't a whole lot of animosity going on. You didn't hear about nobody shooting anybody. You know, occasionally somebody might get a black eye. It wasn't like it was now. You know, I mean, it's, it's, if anybody had told me then that it was going to, I would see the day when it was like it is today, I, would have told, I wouldn't have believed it. You know, I wouldn't have believed it. You know, the, the, the way we disrespect one another. Interestingly, uh, Black Bottom, the ground was turned in 1934. Mm -hmm. I, I was seven years old. Okay. And my father, I think that's where I got a lot of my um, mm -hmm. activity yeah. selections from. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He carried me to the groundbreaking. Oh, wow. And Eleanor Roosevelt mm -hmm. was the speaker. Mm -hmm. And I'm about this high. Yeah, you know? yeah. And we got them kind of on the edge, and people started opening up and letting me come through. Pop was back here mm -hmm. where I could come to come through. And I could stand there and watch and hear Eleanor Roosevelt speak. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what she said. I can imagine. But I know she, her voice was mm -hmm. kind of high. Mm -hmm. everything. And I remember her with that shovel turning the ground. Mm -hmm. Isn't that something? Yeah. And so I think that our strengths. Mm -hmm. came from the fertile soil oh, that's of right. Black yeah. Bottom. Yeah. Uh, to make us endure, because we had to endure a lot. Yeah. Uh, endure a lot, we mm -hmm. had to, mm -hmm. right. But we, uh, we had a good foundation. Yes. So on that yes. fertile soil, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.